Oh Gott. What's going on, Flemmers? <laughs> Papa Flemmy here. Yeah, I'm looking quite weird. That's the first tank top I ever purchased in my life. It looks quite okay. I look nice and sporty, as most of the time. We are going to do something completely random today. We are going to prove a little addition theorem, just because I need it as a prerequisite for a different video. So we are going to dive right in. At first, we are going to write the tangent out in a different way. You know, we have done the math snack, so we know by now that the tangent is nothing but the sine of a plus or minus b over the cosine of a plus or minus b. My throat is itching and it's, it's, <clears throat> it's not too comfortable, to be honest. Now, I want you guys to acknowledge a little fact right here. We know that the sine by our definition on the unit circle is nothing but the imaginary part of the complex exponential function and the cosine is nothing but the real part of the complex exponential function. Meaning that's nothing but the imaginary part of e to the i a plus or minus b over the real part of e to the i a plus or minus b. Okay, so what we can do, we can either write this as for example, the cosine of this, like this right here, okay? Or we can write it as the real part of e to the i times a times e to the i b, okay? This is something we can do. And then we can take the product, distribute the stuff into everything, and then we can actually just take the real and imaginary part respectively. The real and imaginary part respectively. <laughs> I turned the order around a little bit, so this didn't make too much sense. So now we are going to write it out. We are going to do this step by step because I need to reach those 10 minutes. Just because ad revenue notice, this won't take 10 minutes right here, okay? So that's the imaginary part of. What are we going to get? We are going to get the cosine of a plus i times the sine of a. So that's the first part, e to the i times a, okay, times. And now we are going to get the cosine of plus or minus b, but the cosine is an even function, meaning no matter if you have a negative or a positive sign in front of the b, it's going to result in just the positive branch of b, okay? So cosine of b, and then we are going to get plus i times the sign of plus or minus b, okay? Three parentheses, one after another. This has been the first part. Same spiel for this thing right here, okay? Over the real part of, okay, same stuff, cosine of a plus i times the sine of a times the cosine of b plus i times the sine of plus or minus b. Okay, that's a lot of writing right here, but um, everything's going to fall in its place in a second. Up here, we're just going to collect all the terms that are going to have an i in them. Down here, we're going to collect all the terms that don't have an i in them. Just because if you take the real part, this imaginary part is going to vanish. Same spiel with the imaginary part. All the real stuff is going to vanish that doesn't have an i as a common factor. Okay, so we are going to take a little shortcut right here. Meaning, up here, we are going to end up with the imaginary part of. What are we going to get? Okay, the imaginary part consists of i times the sine of a times the cosine of b. So i times the sine of a times the cosine of b. I hope you can see where this came from. This and that multiplied together. And then plus this multiplied together with the cosine of a. So plus the cosine of a times the sine of plus or minus b. Okay, we are going to deal with this part right here in a second. Now we have closed this off. This right here is the imaginary part plus some real part. We don't care about that, just like I said a second ago. Over. Okay, now for the real part. That's, that's a real mess right here. That's a lot of writing actually. So for the real part, we are going to get cosine of A times cosine of B. And then we are going to get, okay, this multiplied with this is part of the imaginary part. Then this multiplied with this is part of the imaginary part. Meaning we are going to be left with i times the sine of a times i times the sine of plus or minus b. i times i is going to be negative, okay? Negative sine of a times the sine of plus or minus b. We're going to bring this positive negative sign to the outside in a second, okay? Plus 
i times something. Okay, this right here is purely the imaginary part. Meaning, if we take those real operators into account, the real and imaginary part operator, this is basically going to vanish and this is going to vanish in the game. Meaning, we are going to be left with, what are we going to get? So this is just the sine of a times the cosine of b. And then, see, the sine is an odd function, meaning the sine of negative b is nothing but negative the sine of b, meaning we can track this plus or minus purely to the front. So this is plus or minus the cosine of a times the sine of b over. What do we have here? So at first cosine of a times the cosine of b, so that works out. And then we have a negative sign right here. If we bring this plus or minus to the outside, if we multiply negative with a plus, we are going to get negative. I made a proof on that. And negative times negative is positive, meaning we are going to change the order of positive and negative right here. It's important because we are considering two branches, okay? So negative or plus, and then we are going to get the sine of A times sine of B. We are basically done. This right here is already a valid addition theorem, but we can do a bit more work on this one. Okay, what we can basically do, you can take two steps right here now. You can either factor out all of the sine stuff or you can factor out all of the cosine stuff. We are going to go for the cosine stuff because we can actually express this tangent right here just with respect to tangent waves. So that's quite cool. That's something you can do. So what we can basically do is factor out the cosine of B on all of those terms. Meaning right here, we are going to be left with the sine of A um, let me see. I hope I didn't make any mistake right here. Yeah, okay, this should be all right still. Okay, we are going to get the sine of A. Okay, we are factoring out cosine of B, plus or minus. When factoring out cosine of B, we are going to get the cosine of A times sine over cosine of b, which is nothing but the tangent of b. I was just thinking because in my head I thought I'm going to get the tangent right here, but no, the tangent is going to be here for now, okay? Over. We're going to factor it out on the numerator and denominator on both parts, meaning it's going to cancel out to one, this cosine of b over cosine of b. I hope you can see where this came from, okay? Or you can just advance this by 1 over cosine of b over 1 over cosine of b. That's the same thing you can do, okay? Okay, now we are going to get this just purely the cosine of a. Negative or plus, we brought this to the outside. We are going to get the sine of a. Sine over cosine of b is once again just the tangent of b. Okay, here it goes. Now, like I said, we are going to um, factor out the cosine respectively of a and b on both numerator and denominator. By factoring out the cosine of a, we are going to get sine over cosine is nothing but the tangent of a plus or minus the tangent of b. Okay, this looks pretty good. It's purely with respect to tangent over. Factoring out the cosine of a leaves us with a one, negative and positive. Now we are going to have sine of a over cosine of a is nothing but the tangent of a times the tangent of b. And this is it. Like I said, you can also factor out the sine waves. You're going to be left with nearly the same thing, just with the cotangent right here. And maybe with A and B switched. But this is it overall, okay? Um, I hope you did enjoy this video. This was just a little shorty, but it's quite important. This formula right here is going to help a lot in a video that's going to come out in the next few days. This was nearly a dab, but it wasn't supposed to be a dab. It was just supposed to be some, I don't know, Chocho move, okay? I'm I'm looking pretty a Chocho ish. Ugh. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel with my providers, teachers like great, or support channel on Patreon or whatsoever. No matter what you do, I thank you guys for watching. Up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya. <laughs>